what's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another recap video of the NFL Draft, the Giants Draft Day 3, also known as rounds 4, 5, 6, and 7 of the NFL Draft was held today. It's still going on, actually, as I'm recording this. But as you guys know, the Giants only had picks in rounds 4 and 6, one pick in round 4, I think it was pick 116 and two picks in round six, uh, pick 196 and 201. Now, Giants completed their draft. They have all their players. It's over for them. I'm going to go over the three that they took and give my thoughts on it. Overall, this was a good draft. It was a good draft. It really was. You know what? Let's just get right into the players we took. The first one being Ellerson Smith, a linebacker um, out of Northern Iowa. Now, this is a guy right here that the Giants spoke to at the Senior Bowl, of course, particularly Joe Judge and the scouting staff. And Judge even said in an interview last night after round three that the Senior Bowl for them was very important. It essentially replaced the NFL Combine, which, of course, was not held this year. The Senior Bowl replaced the Combine in a sense that that's where the coaches got to sit down with a lot of players. And the, um, whoever runs the Senior Bowl did a good job of setting up meetings with players and setting it up so that coaches could talk to them, have face-to-face -face uh, get to know them, get to know how they tick a little bit, see how they play a little bit on the field, obviously, because of the Senior Bowl game. And Ellerson Smith was a guy that they obviously liked enough to take with that fourth pick. He's pretty big. He's like 6'7", I think, 260. And in his time at this small school, he produced. In one year, you know, 2018 at 7.5 sacks, 10.5 tackles for loss. And then in 2019, 14 sacks, 21.5 tackles for loss. Of course, this is the second edge rusher the Giants took in the drive. The first one being Aziz Ojolari. What this is telling me is that they're trying to build up a really, really stacked edge rushing group. Not just in terms of quantity, because we have a lot of guys in it now on that room in terms of quantity. But in terms of quality as well. They're trying to build a good rotation. And even though I wouldn't go as far as to say, oh, it is the caliber of, you know, Michael Strahan, OC, Justin Tuck, JPP, all that, where, you know, we had those legendary rotations. They're trying to build a rotation nonetheless and hoping that some of these guys can develop into legitimate pass rushers. And they're taking a chance on Ellerson here. I honestly do not mind it. I don't mind it at all uh, from the little that I have read. And of course, I have to dive into these players more. I'm very happy with the pick. He's somebody that seems like he has a lot of potential just because of the physical measurements that he brings to the table. Uh, a little bit fast as well. Extremely fast, actually. And that matches, of course, what the Giants want in an outside linebacker. You know, a guy that's going to be rushing. He also has a little bit of versatility in the sense that because of his size, I wouldn't be surprised if they can play him a little bit on the line as well. But somebody that's developmental, you know, I guess you could call the project pick. I wouldn't go as far as to call the project pick, but he is developmental for sure, and the Giants liked him enough to take him. Now, I will say, I'm going to get this out of the way right now, the offensive line talk, right? The Giants had their eyes on offensive linemen in day two. They said that in their interviews. Both Judge and Gettleman said they were looking at it, one guy specifically in day two and day three. I think we all know who that guy in day two was. It was probably Landon Dickerson. Speculation, nobody knows who it was for day three. Probably a guy like Aaron Banks. Both of them got taken uh, before the Giants picked, I think. Um, well, at least I know Landon Dickerson then. And if Aaron Banks wasn't taken, I'm like 99% sure he was before we picked him the third. According to them, the value just did not line up with need for them to take a lineman. So it's not that they're ignoring the offensive line per se. And I've said this, you know, tons of times, especially in my, um, in my recap videos already and in the vid I did right before the draft started. The Giants are very confident in the offensive line they have, and they want to let those guys develop. They want to let them have that chemistry and just continue to be players that play in the game and get better at what they're doing. You're expecting your rookies to improve, and three-fifths of our line are rookies. So you're expecting those guys to get better as their careers go on. They want to see what they do in their second year, especially with Rob Sale now as our new offensive line coach and Pat Flaherty brought back. So I'm, I'm going to say that. They have a lot of confidence in the, in the guys that they have, but they also did not want to just draft an offensive lineman for the sake of drafting an offensive lineman. And honestly, after the third round, that's what they would have been doing if they were going to take an offensive lineman. So it makes sense as to why there was none taken this class. And once again, waiting for the rookies to develop. We went offensive line very heavy last class. The next pick the Giants had in the sixth round now was pick 196, running back Gary Brightwell. And this is one that I like a lot. This guy is that bruiser type of back that we all have been waiting for to be, you know, the backup to Saquon, man. I mean, how many years have we said 
or well, it hasn't been that many. I want to say for two years, we've said if we want to back up for Saquon, it's going to be a north-south runner, you know, heavy set type of guy that just loves to punch the football. Gary Brightwell is basically that with his running style. Now, the thing about him is that he is also, I wouldn't say developmental, but he has a ways to go in terms of, you know, coming up as a player. I'm trying not to use the word develop or developmental, but I guess it's unavoidable at this point. It's because mostly he didn't really have that many snaps at Arizona. Uh, in 2018, he had 91 carries for 525 yards, 2019, 66 carries for 390, and then 2020, 99 carries for 390 as well. He still has a lot of room to grow. But the thing about him is that he runs, he's like a slasher type back. He's very agile for his size and he still uses his size when he's running downhill. And all in all, he's going to be just a nice backup to Saquon and even a guy that a lot of people are forgetting about uh, in Devontae and I'm forgetting his last name now. Devontae Brown? Why am I forgetting his last You guys don't talk about, you guys, wow. We really are, as Giants fans, forgetting about the running back we signed in free agency. But, you know, he had a similar play style to Saquon as well. Gary Brightwell, though, going to be the perfect backup, man. 6'1", 218, very physical. I'm happy with it. We needed it, in my opinion. I wanted the Giants to take a, a backup running back at some point during this draft. And also, remember, in the sixth round, and you could even argue just late round picks in general, these picks are also for the special teams. And this is another thing that Judge and Gellman sort of divulged in that interview, the post day two interview. They are going to be looking for a couple of guys to make, you know, good contributions on special teams. And then to close out the drafts with their last pick, round six, pick 201, the Giants took another cornerback in Rodarius Williams. And I'll tell you this, Rodarius Williams is probably my favorite pick of the late round, of day three of the draft. You know, we were talking about yesterday how Aaron Robinson wasn't supposed to be there in round three. He was supposed to go in round two. Rodarius Williams was an absolute steal in round six. This is a guy that was supposed to go in like three or four. Absolute steal of a pick in my opinion. Absolute stud of a player. And the, the NYPD, the New York pass defense, is in full effect. Now, at this point, we just have so many good players back there. I'm not even worrying about, oh, who's going to start anymore. Well, we, we know who two of our starters are for sure. I'm not even worrying who's going to get more snaps, more snaps, more rotation time anymore. I'm just excited because we're chock full of quality back there. You know, you talk about James Bradbury, Dory Jackson, Darnay Holmes, um, Aaron Robinson, and now Rodarius Williams. Those are five guys that are quality players right there. And we didn't even bring up a guy like Julian Love. Is Isaac Adams still on the team? I don't know. He's probably not going to be. Sam Beal's probably not going to be on the team anymore. Julian Love, speaking to him, might have to switch over permanently to safety just because, like, we don't need you at cornerback anymore, bro. Even though, you know, we did use him a couple of times at corner down, down the line at the season. He did fine. You know, that's on the second outside corner. But Rodarius Williams is an absolute steal. I mean, the dude had 255 coverage, coverage snaps and allowed zero touchdowns. That's really good production for a cornerback right he's tall as well 6'1 and he loves to get at the point of attack with the ball man and I remember I'd never necessarily scouted Rodarius Williams heavily but I remember back early on the draft process you know when I was trying to do my very first mocks I was actually thinking about having him in a second but that was way back you know that's in January and whatnot and he was somebody that was ranked very high early on in the draft process not sure why he drops why he dropped so much all the way to the six, but this is an absolute steal of a pick. And we just have we just have quality back there. And and it's another corner, much like Robinson, that's great at man coverage and man press in particular, which is what Patrick Graham, you know, that's you know what we're hearing that he wants to run more and what he's comfortable with. Now I will put this out there. I'm you know, just you know, food for thought. Last year we had one of the best defenses in the NFL without running a, a you know a man press type of defense. We ran mostly zone coverages. And obviously, it worked completely fine. I mean, James Bradbury, who basically became one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL last year, did it in a, a mostly zone type of scheme. And we'll see how he adjusts back to a man. But, you know, when he was in, you know, man, man coverage type of scheme in Carolina, obviously, it's not the same as what Graham's going to run. I'm just saying when he was in that, he was not nearly as good as he was with the Giants last year. Just food for thought. Obviously, I'm trusting Patrick Graham. I'm trusting the coaching staff. And overall... I like the draft, I like where they're going, and I cannot complain about the fact that we got extra picks next year. I mean, th this was a solid. This was very solid. We started off extremely strong, and I think we finished really well as well. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you all think. Which was your favorite pick of day three? 
Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.